the arms race, and expanding nuclear arsenal. After the United States dropped the atomic bombs on Japan in 1945, the Soviet Union began development of their own A-bombs. By 1949, they too had a working bomb. When the U.S. found out the Soviets had successfully developed a bomb of their own, they immediately began development of a stronger bomb known as the hydrogen bomb or H-bomb, and the Soviets followed suit. By 1953, both had successfully detonated H-bombs, which were hundreds of times more powerful than A-bombs. The H-bombs were huge, and only one could be carried in a bomber. So the U.S. and Soviets started to develop smaller bombs and rocket delivery systems. By the 1960s, airplanes such as the B-52, loaded with two or more H-bombs, were in flight 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, to deter Soviet first strike capabilities. By the 1970s and 1980s, both the U.S. and the Soviet Union had developed intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, air-launched cruise missiles, submarine-launched missiles, in addition to short-range tactical missiles and smaller H-bombs. Some ICBMs were equipped with multiple warheads that could hit up to 10 different targets miles apart. With the U.S. having over 31,000 warheads and the Soviet Union over 45,000, the deterrent strategy of Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD, was established. Neither side would attack the other for fear of being completely destroyed. With the fall of the Iron Curtain in 1991, both sides agreed to diminish their stockpiles. Today, there are still 19,000 nuclear warheads, with about 4,400 of them being actively deployed on missiles or as bombs. And while the threat of nuclear war has greatly diminished, it still exists.